Good evening, everybody. This is Gather to Grow. I'm your host this evening. My name is Dawn Numdu, and I'm looking forward to a fruitful discussion. I'm just accepting our speakers. I think tonight is such an awesome crop that we'll be discussing. And I'm looking forward to getting our speakers on board to tell us more about what they do, where they farm, and also more about the ins and outs of growing cabbage. Um, Jabula, maybe you can just kick us off with telling us a little bit about where you're based, which crops you farm with. Tonight we're talking about cabbage, and I know that this is something that you're doing and producing as well. So maybe just a bit about yourself as an introduction, just to tell the people who you are and how long you've been in the agricultural space. My name is Njabulo Mabazo. I'm based in Emelo, Umalanga province. I'm farming with cabbage, this is chat spinach, done some little bit of green pepper. I started farming in 2020, in September. Thanks so much. That's really awesome. So you're all two years in the business. Thanks so much for being here and sharing your knowledge on growing the specific crop. Jabulo, maybe you can start why you chose to grow cabbage. I know that growing and selling cabbages in Umzanzi is very lucrative. It's a lucrative business to start out with. There's a high demand for this crop and it's really an easy pick for new farmers. Let's maybe just ask you, what are the advantages of farming with cabbage? I started with Swiss chat. Honestly, because I didn't know anything about cabbages. But then I was introduced by my cousin who taught me and mentored me in cabbage. The reason why she advised me to do cabbage, it is because it is popular in Mzansi and it is easy to sell around the community or the informal market. So, and it is easy to grow, even though it requires you to take care of a plant, transplanting up to harvesting. But then it is a nice crop to grow. Definitely. I totally agree. I think a lot of new farmers opt for cabbage specifically because of the point that you're making. Njabulo, so we spoke about the fact that it's a lucrative crop. You said that it's something that new farmers, it's a pick that's good for them and they can, can kind of grow it and thrive in it. The question that I was asking you was around the climate conditions. What is the best climate conditions for growing cabbages? If you're a new farmer, what should you be thinking about? Cabbage can grow in any climate condition, depending on the variety that you choose as a farmer. So in hot places, we choose a variety. In cold places, we choose a variety that can stand, withstand the coldness. In Pumalanga, we have two regions, which is the low field and the high field. In the low field, it is hotter, and in the high field, it is cold. That is where I am situated during winter. So you will choose a variety that will withstand really that climate of that place. So we have different types of varieties in cabbage that will stand the climate and diseases. Thanks so much, Njabulo. Now let's focus on the varieties. You spoke about the varieties that there are many available and that obviously depending on what variety you choose is also dependent on the climate you have. What should farmers understand about the different varieties and what do you suggest is the best variety to start with as a new farmer in Jabulo? A variety that a new farmer can start with, I think it is Conquestado and Optima if you are in the higher field, like the colder places. Then if you are on the lower field, you can go with Megaton or Conquestado. Conquestado is big in, in, in head, it is medium in head, and Optima is big. Same applies to megaton, it's big in size. And it also depends on the market that you are willing to supply, you are willing to take your product to. Some they require the small heat or medium heat or even bigger heat. Let's make an example of two people. Those who are living in suburb areas, they will require a smaller heat. So it means you will play around conquestado. And let's say you are supplying school feeding schemes. Those guys will need bigger heads. The retail shops like Boxer, they will want bigger heads. So you will play around Megaton and Optima. I wouldn't advise a new farmer to start with the drum head. Your market, if you are selling like in a community, they will tell you that drum head finish off the cooking oil in the pot while you are cooking it. And it doesn't get ready sooner. It just takes some. I wouldn't advise someone to play around drumming. Just play around Conquest Dado and Optima and also 
put the fact that some cabbages need withstand uh, climates and they can withstand pests and diseases and also what is the market is looking for. I think as a crop, it's quite resilient. And I think, like you've mentioned in Jabulo, that there are very clear markets for it. And it is consumed by many in the country. So there's no doubt that you'd be able to sell this crop compared to maybe other niche crops that we have spoken about on on these sessions. So I definitely agree that you've made it very clear that the varieties to choose from, you know, there are clear markets for it. So thanks for that. And Jabulo. Should farmers be purchasing seeds or alternatively buying seedlings? What in your experience is the best way to start? And also maybe just in terms of input cost, is it cheaper to buy seeds and go with seeds? Is it a little bit more expensive to buy seedlings? What is your take on that? On my side, I was able to purchase seedlings. I've never tried to make seedlings on my own and it is cheaper when you make things on your own like making a bedding, sowing those seeds and then taking them from the bedding and you transplant them, then buying the seedlings. So a new farmer, I'm talking about someone who is operating on a hectare of land below and those who are farming at home, like those who have backyard gardens. I think they should try everything on their own. Maybe purchase seeds, sow them in bed, take them in bed and plant them and see how it is going. Because you want to minimize the cost as a new farmer so that you can see a profit if you're selling. I totally agree. I think you kind of start if you're really on like a backyard basis. It's better to try as many things on your own. What is the type of soil that this crop requires? Can you maybe give us some more detail on that? We have loamy soil, sandy soil, clay soil. It requires a soil that has good water holding capacity and also it can hold the, the the nutrients so that kind of soil will be a loom soil or a combination of loom sandy loom clay so loom soil is the soil where you can plant cabbage i actually see that there's another one of my speakers lufuno now that you're here, maybe just introductions. I know you wear many hats. I met you through Afasa, I think almost three years ago. And you're a cabbage farmer, but you do many other things. So maybe just short introductions and then we'll take it from there. We have covered quite a bit of ground in terms of our topic this evening. I know that you were listening in. So we spoke about, you know, the fact that cabbage is a lucrative business, agribusiness to start with because the crop is high in demand and it's also kind of an easy pick for new farmers. Share a little bit about yourself and then we'll take it from there as well. Uh, my name is Rufuno Kaltonich Kudini. I'm a youth who is involved in mist farming in Limpopo, Venda. I'm doing mist farming. I'm doing cabbages, cash crops. Also venturing into chickens. We are establishing a chicken hatchery. We are also emerging into game farming. So by passion, I'm a farmer. By profession, I'm an agriculture scientist. Uh, I'm also working for AFASA as a youth desk to try to coordinate projects, also to give technical advice to the young farmers. Currently, we have planted 15,000 conquistador cabbages in Limpopo. Thank you so much. Me saying that you wear many hats was a bit of an understatement. <laughs> With all of the different things that you're doing and all the different avenues that you're exploring within the agricultural sector, thanks so much. It's great to have you with us. Um, maybe just as a start, why you guys chose to venture into farming with cabbages and also just a bit of an overview of what it looks like and what new farmers are experiencing through your network with Afasa. Also, just a bit of information about that. Cabbage, it's a feeder of, of nutrients, and now I think it's taking over as a staple food in the nature's rising to come due to affordability, due to the healthy, due to the nutrients. So we have seen that cabbages now is in demand in, in the market, also which results in good margin. Also, it's less to grow, so it, you will get your investment or money uh, in short. Also, you know, hence, you know, cabbage is popular in the market. So there's no much of introduction regarding cabbages to the society. So we just want to have to carry on with, with what have been done before. So hence, you know, when you are running a business, you must run it profitable. So cabbage is one of the great business that you can look at. Also, it's a source of a great employment source to, to our people. And you can enjoy your cabbages in many ways. 
Thanks so much. I think that's definitely the same sentiment that Njabulo shared and his introductions, the fact that it is popular in South Africa and that there's high demand for it. And he was actually just also talking, the last question I asked him was around type of implements that you would need. Now, as a small farmer, we know that many farmers don't have access to, you know, mechanization and they don't have, you know, these big tractors available. What are some of the type of tools that you would need or farming implements that you would need if you're in the process of preparing your soil? What did you guys have access to and what are you using at the moment, even in your planting regime? The preparation of cabbages is very important when you talk about your primary uh, preparation. Because I started last year, so we are still hiring to our neighbors your mud board plow or just till the soil. So I'll take you to the steps. So we use mud board plow just to soften the soil, and then we use it three to four times, and then we add a little bit of fertilizer, adequate fertilizer, during our last plow, and then we use a, a disc just to loosen the cloth of the soil, and then from there we do the ridges, and then we prepare our drip irrigation. Thanks so much, Lufun. We haven't yet spoken about irrigation. Maybe we should cover that now. For those who've been listening from the beginning, and Jabulo spoke about, you know, opting to either grow your own seedlings and he bought seedlings, as a start and then also he spoke briefly about the types of varieties that they are and also what which varieties are good for market but let's talk about irrigation and what is the best way to irrigate when it comes to the specific crop there are different types of irrigation some they use center by vote those web capital for some as a start i think it will be advisable to use your your, your drip irrigation Hence, you know, the other advantage of using a drip irrigation, it can last for a long time. Also, it's easy for your plants to grow under the drip irrigation. Uh, also, when you apply for your fertilizers, apply your supplements. So it's easy when you're using drip irrigation also for control of weeds. So I think it's a good advantage when you're using a drip irrigation. Anjabulo, do you agree with this? What was your method? And did you also have a specific irrigation program? And what does that look like for this crop? Yes, yes, I agree with Lufuno to use drip irrigation. But on my side, I used flooding system because my place was steep and I didn't have money to purchase drip irrigation. So drip is the way to go. Flooding, you can do it, but it wastes a lot of water. So drip saves water and you can reuse it in the next cycle. Thanks for that. Let's focus on growth timelines from planting from either seedlings or seeds to harvesting. And also, what is the best time to plant this crop? I think in the beginning, we spoke that it can virtually grow in any climate. But when is the best time when it really thrives? Uno, do you want to take this one? Hence, you know, it depends on your climate conditions area where you're from but on our side normally hence we are busy harvesting so the, the harvesting what we are doing now we planted uh, around march so we are currently harvesting it now normally it's three months from seedlings until harvesting so what we do and we told you that we're planting around march and then around april out for pests and then we use metamidophores or for caterpillars for leaf eaters like uh, your cut webs so we scout it for until maybe seven days during April. And then if we receive rain and then we apply another one and then we use warlock for fungus development. But on my side, hence I'm the only one who is farming in my area, that side of my farm. So we don't experience lots of pests. We were in a good advantages regarding that. But normally it's three months. And then after three months, we leave it a bit of two weeks. And then when we see the full head or the size with the form text, and then we, we start harvesting it. Thanks, Tufono. I see we have a request for someone who'd like to contribute or join the conversation. Derek, you are welcome to ask a question to our speakers if you'd like to engage on this specific topic. Thank you, Chair. I'm not so sure if my question is directly related to the cabbage. It may be it's close to that. I'm doing spinach, but I'm struggling with birds. How do I arrest birds? Are there pesticides or chemicals that I can use to drive the birds away? Thank you. Thanks so much for contributing and sharing your question. Lufuno, any advice from your side? It's not specifically on cabbage, but I think the same applies, especially if you're planting in an open field. What advice do you have? Thanks, Don. Also, Derek, for the question. I haven't experienced that at the farm. 
But normally, I had people saying they use bed scarers. They will be there at the farm. I don't know what type of bed are you struggling with at your farm, Mr. Derek. I even counter any any farmer coming saying oh, he's struggling with bed. But if maybe you can have a specific type of bed. I think it's those uh, small whitish beds. They normally move in groups. They are attacking the spinach because it's the only green that's around the area. Everything else is dry since it's winter time. So the veggies become a target. Maybe there's other people in the space who have issues with birds as well. If you do and you have some advice for Derek, just grab the mic. And maybe it's also a good conversation to have because I know that a lot of farmers experience livestock theft, but I have not yet in any of the topics that we've covered around crop farming had anyone sort of give advice around this, Derek. So maybe it, you can you know, DM me and I can maybe find out from you and maybe we can even host a space specifically around some of the challenges is involved with crop farmers. But just on that point, maybe some of the other pests that you do encounter when farming with cabbage and jabulo, what have you dealt with in farming with this crop? I haven't encountered any problems with pests, but then I can share some tips what you can do if you are having a problem with doves, pets, doves and moles. So as a farmer, you need to buy dry chilies and you crush it and then you will sprinkle over your crops as it, it is crushed. And if you are having a problem with moles, then you have to build the the wind aeroplanes. Then you're going to stick it around your area. So when it spins, it vibrates and it will disturb the moles to go away from working a space. Thanks so much, Sinjabula, for that. Derek, I hope it answers your question. Do you need more clarity on that? Thank you so much. I'll try that. We'll see what, what happens. Maybe I'll be able to give feedback. Yes, definitely. Please do come back next week and give us some feedback. I would appreciate that. Especially the one around the chilies, because that's interesting. I would definitely want to know how that worked for you. What about the harvesting process? Is it very labor intensive? And what are the tools that you need to have or use when harvesting? Jabulo, do you want to take this one? And then I'll also ask Lafuna to elaborate. Yes, it is labor intensive because we don't have a machinery that do the job for us. So it is us as farmers personally who cut out our produce. So it is labor intensive. And the tools that we use, you use a knife or pruning loopers to cut out the cabbage from the ground. Thanks so much, Njabulo. Derek, also just a comment from one of our listeners, Diana, she's also in the space. She's a plant scientist and she's saying that you can also consider scarecrows that could also help with the birds. And then you have to change them around and also change their clothing time and again. And this specifically helps for spinach. So yeah, so there's scarecrows and then the chilies is an option. But thanks so much for the advice, guys. I love this. I love that we can engage on WhatsApp and Twitter and just go with it. Okay, Lufono, just a question around harvesting. Do you have... Any advice? Also, I think you spoke about it helps with employment. So is it very labor intensive? How many agricultural workers would you need to employ during your harvesting period? And what should you be thinking about in terms of labor costs as well? The, that's the excited part of the farmer, you know, during harvesting. It is labor intensive. Hence, you need to add your labors uh, depending on the harvest or depending on your population crops. So. Normally, we use use knives, we use bangers to cut our cabbages. And then in the morning, normally we cut them around 10 o'clock so that we must not contaminate them with pathogens. So, yes. And then in terms of storage of this crop, it's not as perishable, but what should new farmers understand in terms of storing it before they take it to market or if you're doing same day, you know, harvesting and delivering, what are some of the things that you should be thinking about? Lufuno or Jabolo? Uh, as you know, cabbages need a cool, a, a cool, dry place. So when we cut them, we unrinse them until ready to be used. So it is a perishable product. So normally we advise farmers or our customers not to cut. Hence, you know, if you cut them, it loses a little bit of vitamins. And then it's also faster to be spoiled if you cut them. So if you can put them inside the fridge, you can refrigerate them maybe cut the head and then put it in the plastic. And then if you can put it in the fridge, it can last for a long time. Perfect. 
if you're storing it on your farm, what are some of the things that you should be taking note of when storing on the farm before you take it to market? On my case, we don't store. Immediately when we had an order, we cut them with 200. We cut them, it's going straight to the retailer. We don't store our cabbages. Rahula, do you also work on the same basis? And then also just to say that our other speaker, he's saying that he agrees with the speakers that are able to contribute. And yeah, also just apologies from his side for not being able to join us. But he is here as a listener, guys. We cut and we send to the market. But we have fortunate farmers who might have storage facilities. So if you freeze it, it can stay up to nine months. If you have a counter, it stays up to 10, 10 days. If you have cold rooms, it can stay up to four weeks. On our side, we just cut and take it to the market. The storage is the ground for us currently. We don't have those facilities to store our cabbages. Leshalakha is also saying in terms of storage, his advice would be to search for markets before planting because he believes that when you're dealing with emerging or startup farmers, storage might be a problem. And that's exactly what you're saying in Jabolo, that storage is a problem if you're a new farmer and you're not able to, you know, house it for a long time. So yeah, I think that's the best way. Ensure you have a good market and basically just send it off to market as as soon as it's ready. What are some of the shortfalls or challenges when it comes to growing this crop? You guys are making it sound too good to be true, to be honest. Are there any challenges in Jabulo? Do you have any challenges that you have faced with farming cabbage? We do face challenges like the weather conditions. The, the, the first one is if you don't have a cover net or in a tunnel, so definitely when hail comes, it will destroy your crops. And person diseases, if you don't know which pest, which disease are you dealing with, so you will have a challenge. I have such challenges but then we are learning well done. Lech also just saying to me here that the other thing that farmers should know or understand to space out their planting dates so they would have different harvesting dates so that you don't get too overwhelmed by the product so that's a very good point. For now maybe you can talk about some of the challenges that you've had what should farmers know and understand also when trying to you know plant or make a success of farming with cabbages. Most of the challenges now we, which we have encountered late prior to our harvesting was the same as in Jawolo in terms of your climate change or global women. You know. We also experienced hail. Yeah. I think it was two weeks before harvesting, so it, it really damaged our crops. But what I can say to the farmers, in terms of market, there is a good market for cabbages. The market is easy and simple. In your local or retailers, it's about your quality and it's not about quantity, but your quality. What I also advise, hence you have alluded, is that you have to first identify your market. What's your market? What's the need? What's the demand in, in your local area? And then you work toward to prepare, knowing that at the end, my product is going to it's either spa or so forth. It's good to identify your market before you start preparing or you start planting. You know, Cabbages can work for us in Lipopo, but you can find KZ10 tomatoes can work for them. So the challenge that we, we faced is only the hail that really hit us hard, and then we're trying to recover from it now. Thank you. Thanks, Lipuno. Julius, I see that your hand is raised. The floor is yours. You can unmute your mic and ask a question or contribute to the conversation. No, I just wanted to say what Lufuno said is spot on, especially when it comes to quality versus quantity. So I feel like most farmers go for quantity, and in most cases, Especially for a starting, for a startup farmer, quantity becomes a problem for you in terms of the management because at the end of the day, you want your produce to be of the highest quality as possible. So I just wanted to say yes, Lufuno, what he said. And I think the other, you said it sounded too good to be true. I think with most farmers I've worked with or have experienced, the problem lies within a lack of planning. Most farmers do not plan ahead whether be it in terms of your pesticide, your pest management control, the setup, you need to be well prepared before even planting. You need to know the terrain in which you are planting. You need to know your common diseases that in your region. So I've heard farmers who planted and they were experiencing worst case of cutworm and the manageable disease. But if you had not planned for it prior to you even planting it affects your yields 
too much. It, it's a factor when it comes to your yield. So I think the planning part is the most important part of everything. So before you start even planting, plan it through. Know your soil, know what you need, know your fertilizers. Don't let pesticides surprise you. Be prepared for whatever pest that might occur. Thank you for giving me a chance to speak. Thanks, Julius. I appreciate it. Uh, great insight. I totally love that, you know, this platform is there for anyone with some experience on the specific crop to share their to share their comments as well. So thanks so much for that. Our other speaker, Lesharaha, is saying that on the shortfalls, that there are different climatic conditions lead to different difficulties. He says, for example, if you're dealing with pest and whining and weaning, is it whining? I'm not sure. Through cabbages, they can survive humid conditions, but too much can also, you know, introduce mildew on your crop and then you have to deal with that. I've actually come across powdery mildew. We did something on our Farmers Inside Track podcast on that with ACI Plant House. Um, which basically gave farmers some advice on how to deal with it. And that's exactly what I think Julius was also alluding to. He also says that you need to think about regular sprouting and pre-research on common diseases, also how to control these diseases. So thanks so much for that. Um, that's our other speaker, Michelle Achai, also just contributing there via WhatsApp. Um, I think we've come to the end of tonight's conversation. Jabulo, did you still want to say something? I see your hand was raised. Um, maybe just one last comment from you and then also from Lufuno before we wrap up. I want to agree with Julia's planning is very important. Let's say you're working on a 2,500 square meters. Then you know cabbage it is 60 by 60 by space, spacing. Then it will give you a population of 6,944 population of plants so you must know as a farmer the quantity of each plant that will take so planning is very important you will know the pack of fertilizers that you will need to work in that particular place so if you know the population you will know how much of fertilizer you will need to use you will know how much of chemicals mm -hmm. you will need to use so i think planning is very important curious we thank you, sir. Love it. Thanks so much, Njabulo. Lufuno, last comments from you as we wrap up. Lufuno, last comment from you as we wrap up. Thanks, Don. Thanks, Julius. Indeed, planning is the key. I think the most important thing you, you need to do is also, you want to start this business, is to survey your area, identify the needs of your local people. It's not about cabbages, but you have to go deep down and search what is lacking around it. And then from there, you can, you can go and prepare. Cabbage business is easy. It's simple. It's doable. It's about you, your patient. What do you want to do? I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thanks so much, Lufuno. Thanks so much, Njabulo. Thanks, Julius. Thanks, Derek, for your questions, as well as my speaker that has been contributing via WhatsApp that I've kind of been voicing. Uh, Lesha Lachai, thank you so much for your contributions as well. From my side, for now, Everything of the best, guys. And I'll see you guys next week. Same time, same place here on Food from Zanzi's Gather to Grow. Good night and happy farming.